Alright guys, what is happening? Today, I have a pretty cool one for you. Today I'm going to be telling you about this GPS chip. Uh, the company is a few years old, I believe. I'm not sure exactly when they started it up. Uh, this chip has really changed the game for fishermen and for everyday boaters it can be useful as well. This chip is one of a kind and it really, in my opinion, blows everything else out of the water. This chip is probably the best on the market right now. There are some things about this chip um, that they can improve on and I'll talk about that later in the video. So the chip I'm talking about here is Florida Marine Tracks. I actually have it displayed on my Simrad right here and I'm going to show you guys close up uh, on the machine um, what it looks like. So basically this chip features high definition satellite images and they have pre-run tracks that you can run. So the people that made this, they actually went out on the water and they ran, they ran these tracks themselves so they know exactly uh, where to go and where the safe water is. Uh, the tracks are color coded so you know what tracks you can run on what part of the tide. Um, so that's really neat as well. That's really the highlight of their uh, entire chip. The satellite images on this chip put almost every other chip on the market to shame. These images are better than what you would see on Google Earth. Um, they, you could see every little detail you need to know uh, to know exactly where you can run and where you can't. And that's what the tracks are made for, but you can also see um, a lot more detail around the tracks so you can see exactly uh, why those tracks are built that way. No other chart on the market can even touch uh, the Florida Marine tracks in my opinion, even the high level Navionics and strike line charts, I really don't think there's any competition there. And speaking of competition, I might as well compare the prices. I'm not going to hide the prices for you. I do believe that these prices are fair for what you get. Alright guys, I have both websites up, strike lines and Florida Marine tracks here. I already went on strike lines website and i looked at their 4k aerial charts which is it right here they do have more chart options if you want to look at those they have more like uh offshore stuff there i mainly want to compare the aerial charts obviously because florida marine tracks they don't do uh, really anything else except for the aerial uh and some offshore you know numbers and stuff like that but they're mainly focused on inshore and like aerial photography so it's like here this is the list of all of their chips for each uh region of florida and louisiana louisiana they have five chips a hundred dollars each you have to buy a different chip for every part of louisiana while florida marine tracks you go to their website you look at their charts you have the florida chips and then you have louisiana $600 for Louisiana charts. I thought it was actually less than that, but what we actually look at Louisiana here, they have all of the tracks built in as well. $600 if you wanted to do that. If you wanted to go to strike line, you would only get aerial images and you would have to buy five different chips for $500. Now this is where uh, things just get crazy is the amount of chips they have for Florida. You start with Crystal River here, and then you go all the way down. This is all Florida. This is all Florida, all the way down to the end of the page here. And then you have uh, samples as well. If you wanna buy sample chips, those are $49 each if you wanted to buy those. Um, I'm not sure how much they are if you just wanna download the images, but if you do want a sample of a 10, square mile area almost 50 bucks and i actually added all of the florida chips not including the samples i added all of those to my cart and as you can probably see already there are 24 florida chips again no samples these are all chips so after tax it's t over $2,500 and those are 24 different chips. You can't, obviously you, there's no unit out there that holds that many chips. Mine holds two. I'm going to, uh, their option here, $650 if you wanted to buy both sections of Florida. And you can put both those chips in your unit, which I don't recommend, it actually slows it down, but you can, you, ha you can have two chips, at, you don't only have to buy two chips and it's $650 versus $2,500. So I really don't see why someone would consider uh, buying those strike lane charts unless you just wanted like one area and you only wanted to pay a hundred bucks. But again, you get 
the tracks in here as well, you get all of the features that you get in Florida Marine Tracks. You don't get anything except for satellite images with strike lines. So uh, it's really a no brainer in my opinion. But if you really know your area well and you just want an overlay like strike lines, then go for it. Only pay $100. While I'll admit those aerial images from strike line, those are very advanced as well. But again, they don't have all the features that you can see in the Florida Marine Tracks. And I don't know how those charts will show up on a unit like my Simrad. If I can get my hands on one of those strike line charts, I will make a comparison video and show you what they look like um, on the Simrads. So I'll show you the aerial images from both companies and see if there's any difference or see if one is better than the other. So now I'm gonna show you guys close up on what this chip looks like. So this is a really good area to focus on. This is uh, Salt River and Crystal River. This is a very popular cut through uh, for a lot of the captains and guides, including me around here that want to use this to go to their fishing spots. So without this chart, without this chip here, I would not have been able to learn this river this fast. And I would not have had the confidence to just go out there every day and learn this river. If you don't know how to run this, you are going to hit something. It is just that way. Even on a high tide, some of this stuff sticks out pretty far. So unless you really know it, you are gonna hit something. So uh, this is what these marine tracks are all about. This is something I do wanna mention, like these red tracks, like I mentioned, these are supposed to be safe water tracks for any tide condition, uh, high tide and low tide. But this is something that I noticed on more than just this track alone. Some of these tracks are a little off from where they could be in a lot better position, I should say. So, so right here, you can see this area right here. You can easily tell there's a deep spot right here, and then there's this really shallow spot here. It looks like grass, that is a huge rock bed, and that track goes right over it and actually run that track all the time. And I never really had an issue until I had a negative tide. I uh, ran a charter on a Ranger Banshee and I kind of freaked out a little bit, made the mistake of slowing down and ended up hitting it. If I just ran right over it and went on plane over it, would have went, wouldn't, wouldn't have had a problem. But since I slowed down, I actually ended up hitting that. That Ranger Banshee, like I said, that could easily just went right over this oyster bar or rock bar, I should, I should say. But the, my point is there's a deep cut right here that I noticed. And all I did was just start making my own track around uh, this little deep cut here. And I turn my tracks off because obviously I don't want you guys uh, seeing where I go. But this is one of the main tracks I use and that is pretty much all I do now is when I'm coming from uh, Twin Rivers, I literally just branch off a little bit and then just go around this rock bar here. They could have easily spotted that. When they ran these tracks, I don't think they did these on negative tides. They When you run on a negative tide, this sticks out a lot farther uh, than a regular low tide, like in the summertime. In the summertime, you will never hit this rock going on plane. When I show you guys these things, like these little, you know, just like these little, this little stuff that they could have fixed, I'm not trying to scare you guys from buying it. It's just like what I would do buying these chips. Before you go out on your first trip and you wanna use these tracks to run some unfamiliar waters, look at these tracks before you go out, scout any areas that may look pretty low. For any area that looks shallow or doesn't look right on the track, and you might be able to find another uh, way around that area, what I would do, I have like a little mark button here on my Simrad. What I would recommend, just like mark a range of an area like use like a little dot or something to mark uh, where you're uncertain of whether you can make it through uh, that area and then just take it nice and easy when you get there and when you actually run that track like I said I'm not trying to scare you guys away from buying this I do not regret buying it I this cut out probably a decade worth of experience that I would have needed to be able to run through here and you see all these 
oyster bars and rocks. There's a lot of limestone around here in Crystal River and Homosassa, uh, especially when you got down to the Chaz area in Yankee Town. Pretty much the entire nature coast has all this kind of stuff. I'm actually gonna show you guys Yankee Town because that's worse. Yankee Town here, you got a lot of, uh, again, limestone, oyster bars, rocks, and you'll see the skull and crossbones there. Uh, basically telling you don't go there, obviously. And then you have the red track here, that's pretty pretty accurate over here. Uh, and then you get up into these little creeks. This is where you see a lot of your limestone and really hardcore oyster bars around there too. Uh, just gotta be really careful. You'll see the, the uh, hazard signs there as well. Even on a red track, they say, just make sure you know where you're going basically and don't fly through there on your first uh, trip over there. And then you see the we with Lacucci area. I mean, that is, if you didn't have these tracks, there's no way you would find your way around here. There's absolutely no way. Again, black tracks don't run those on low tide. You'll probably get stuck there. But um, this red track here, that'll help you find your way around there getting way back up in the creeks. There's actually a boat ramp here, which is really cool. Um, that looks like a primitive ramp, if I'm not mistaken. Probably a kayak ramp, if you wanna use that. And then it also has the main ramps as well, which is really cool. Um, so if you're trying to find a place to launch, uh, instead of looking on Google or anything, you'd literally just load up your machine here and you'd be able to find all the ramps nearby, which is really neat. These guys really went above and beyond on this chip. And then these skull and crossbones, again, like this stuff where you, like they mark the rocks on the outside of the channel here, that's good structure as well. So that's good for uh, finding new spots and all that as well. I've used this chip in Cedar Key as well. Like this area, you see all the sandbars and everything. You don't have to worry about a bunch of limestone and all that stuff out here in this area. You just gotta worry about the sandbars on low tide and how to navigate the sandbars. So that shows you all that as well, which is really cool. Around Snake Key is a really, uh, popular cut right here um, on a regular chart you wouldn't really be able to see that all that well uh, that shows pretty much all the detail you need to be able to run through there and then you have over here even where you don't have a satellite image it, they do outline uh, the shallow the shallow areas on the flats as well which is really cool even in more like non-complicated areas like here in Ancloat, this can still be really useful like you can see you will not see anything like this on another chip. So even if you're not in that nature coast, you don't have to run those crazy tracks. Even over here, like just going down the channel and trying to find spots on, you know, the outside and the creeks and stuff to fish, you'll know exactly where to go and where you won't uh, run aground. We went night fishing around in here, around this area, and it was pitch black and we couldn't see anything. And I was, we were done fishing uh, over here. We passed by the bridge and we want to go fish these docks here. Dylan was like, oh yeah, you should you should watch out right in front of you. There's a huge oyster bar. And that's what he was talking about right there. But you follow that red track. It was pitch black and I, would, I just followed that track all the way around these docks. And I did not have a problem getting there because I had that safe water track uh, to get there. So I didn't have any risk of actually running into that. And again, I mean, this is just ridiculous <laughs> the amount of detail you get in this and you, they have tracks going all the way up in here in this little creek so even if you're not running anywhere with crazy limestone and rocks all over the flats and stuff uh, like we have in the nature coast which this is really what the target audience is is for my area even if you don't live in that area um, this can still be really useful. All right guys, I can't believe I didn't think of this before. Uh, I did just load up the South Florida chip just so I could show you guys for anyone that lives in Naples or uh, Southeast Florida. This in particular, the Everglades, if you live in the Everglades, this will be very helpful. You know, this looks kind of cluttered here. You can turn all of these names off and stuff uh, if you wanted just to uh, free up space for like the actual tracks. Uh, but I set up everything as I would run it if I actually did go down there to the Everglades. And again, great detail. Um, 
probably not as good as like Crystal River, but this is still really good detail and it shows you all the sandbars and shallow spots that you need to uh, know where they are and uh, how to navigate around them. This, the Everglades probably aren't as challenging as the Nature Coast, but there are still are a lot of obstacles that you need to avoid. Uh, in this particular area, it's mostly just sand, but you go up a little bit north and there's a specific spot I found over here. Like you go up around here. I mean, it is, there's a lot of rocks and probably those look like they could be limestone or standalone rocks and oysters and stuff like that. So I do eventually want to make a trip down the Everglades and do a really big fishing trip there. And this would be a very big help. That way I could know where everything is. And even just finding spots as well, like I mentioned before, literally just scouting uh, before we head out on the trip deciding where we want to go fish. And then for anyone in Southeast Florida, I'll go ahead and do that as well. This is all pretty simple, but there still are a lot of places that you can run aground and all that stuff. This chart shows very good detail and shows you all the tracks to run around that stuff, just like everywhere else. I'm actually not gonna spend too much time on this area. Uh, it's pretty self-explanatory. One other area I wanna show you is the Keys. They have tracks all over the Keys as well. Tracks running outside the channel. You have the rocks right there. Uh, if you run outside the channel, you know, don't wanna hit that. And I could really spend days looking at all these tracks in the Keys. I mean, there's so many, but you know, as you can see, it's just, just as detailed as everywhere else. It'll really help you find your way around and not hit anything. All right guys, that's gonna wrap it up. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you're hardcore inshore saltwater anglers in Louisiana or Florida, um, even they actually have tracks for the lakes in Florida as well. I didn't mention that. Even though if you're lake fishing, you probably want to get a different chart. But the target audience, if you're an inshore saltwater fisherman and you want a chart that shows you a crazy amount of detail and wants and you want to go to new areas and explore new areas and you don't know how to run those places, I would highly recommend looking into buying this chip because it is well worth it. So hope you guys enjoyed the video and we'll see you in the next one.